in this month, at this time of year, certain things become clearer. The human heart usually is a muddy, malfunctioning, neglected, withered organism, even though it's, as the Hadith says, the key to the well-being of all other parts of us. In the fil jasadi la mudra, idha saluhat saluha al-jasadu kullu, wa idha fasadat fasad al-jasadu kullu, ala wahi al-qalb. Truly in uh, the body there is a piece of flesh which when it's sound, the rest of us is sound. And when it's corrupt, the rest is corrupt, and it is the heart. So this heart, which is to do with consciousness, the I, the selfhood, is necessarily an enigma. It's easier to see outside than to see within. There are divine horizons outside, but within. And because we are outward looking and our jawari, our limbs and our senses are for experiencing the outside world, what is within is usually beyond our ken. That applies even to our physical organs. There is the liver, I have a spleen, kidneys, stomach, they're doing their job. I usually don't give thanks for them, but they are there, miracles of divine technology doing their job year after year, decade after decade, and I only start grumbling when usually through my own abuse they start to malfunction, but I can't see them. They're within. But that's just the superficial within. The real within is the I, the consciousness, the what I am, the nafs, the self. And that is an enigma. Nafs bir mu'ammadr. Uh, the self is a riddle. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the self and the heart, which is somehow the place where the self is centered, to be an organ of perception. We perceive things, we learn things by heart. The heart experiences emotions and turbulences, intuitions. The heart can even see through dreams aspects of another world. The heart is clearly essential to what makes us Bani Adam, not creatures of mud and clay and dirt, but angelic creatures to whom the very angels can bow down. It's because of this I-ness, this self, this transcendence within that we are worth anything at all. So we'd like to know what's going on there. And the companions asked the Holy Prophet وسلم, about the ruh. And he has to say, Allah tells him, uh, The spirit is of the divine command or the divine affair. It's God's business. And of knowledge you've been given but little. So this most important part of us, the thing that we really are, is the thing we understand least. And most of our mistakes, if not all of them as human beings, is because we're not really focused, not really spiritually active, other bits of us, impulses, half-digested memories, the longing for status, those other things pull us this way, and this is a kadar, a mud that, that pollutes the surface of what should be a pure lake, a mirror that reflects the light of heaven. And that's our state. But we have been, in this month, given the opportunity to calm down a bit. This is a retreat. We are self-isolating, even in normal times. There's a little bit of i'atikaf in every Ramadan. We withhold our hands and therefore the heart is withheld from some dunya pleasures and distractions. Sufi dati shayateen, the devils are chained. Inna shaytana yajri fi bini adama majra dam fadayiqu majarihi bil ju'a. The Holy Prophet says, the shaitan flows in the son of Adam along with the blood, so narrow the, his arteries with hunger. Uh, and that tends to break us. Arrogance is less. Uh, we have less energy for stupid playing around. We become more serious, uh, slightly broken, therefore more realistic and real human beings. And at this time, the heart can start to function. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that he has ennobled the descendants of man. 
of, of, of Adam, Karamna Bani Adam, and also has said that at the higher degree of what we are, he loves us. Uh, this is in the Hadith and Nawafil. وَلَا يَزَالُ عَبْدُ يَتَقَرَّبُ إِلَيَّ بِالنَّوَافِلِ حَتَّى أُحِبَّهِ My slave, it's a sound hadith, a hadith Qudsi, draws nearer to me with optional acts until I love him. God can love us for all of the mess that we represent, all of the missed opportunities, all of the inattentive moments, all of the, the waste, like a machine that's never really used for the right purpose or properly tuned or properly lubricated. It's kind of abused. What a waste. It's like having a Formula One car and using it to pull a plough or something. That's not what we're for. We abuse ourselves. And, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that there is this love. And he has said that the name of the Holy Prophet وسلم, is Habibullah. And this is to be a particular quality of the Ummah of Islam. Each Ummah has a particular fragrance, a particular wavelength, a particular modality of being alive in the spirit. And this is indicated in a number of hadiths where the founders of those Ummahs are named. Sayyidina Ibrahim السلام, is Khalilullah, Sayyidina Musa, is Kalimullah, Sayyidina Isa, is Ruhullah, Sayyidina Nuh, is Najiullah, etc. Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is named in the hadith as Habibullah, God's beloved. And there is a particular dimension to the inner life of Islam, the heart life of Islam that, is, that pertains to love. And in the month of Ramadan, we start to taste this. At least we taste the love of the forms. Mm -hmm. The divine love for the forms of Islam, which are prophetically gifted and which are beautiful. The fast is a beautiful thing. The prayer is a beautiful thing. The zakat, the hajj, majestic and also beautiful. Allah loves those actions. And we learn to love them as well. And the Holy Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, وَجُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِ فِي الصَّلَاةِ the delight of my eyes has been set in prayer. To the extent that we progress and the ego stuff dies down, put back in its box, kicked away, and we become real and ourselves uh, in this prophetic way, we really start to love the forms of Islam. And we love the prayer. جُعَلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي that's a measure of our iman. He used to say, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Arihna Ya Bilal, give us rest with it, O Bilal, inviting him to give the adhan. It is the prayer that allows us to relax, to detox, to be at ease, to be in a state of equilibrium, the inward reality of what the outward form of the prayer enacts. So this quality of mahabba, of love, is fundamental to our religion. And it is evinced by the Holy Qur'an's insistence again and again that we look at the wonders of the earth around us. This tafakkur. إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ The way the heavens and the earth are created, the succession of night and day, signs for people of understanding, of lub, insight, heart. And this Seeing them as signs means love. You see, the divine creator and his genius, his workmanship in everything, you can't help but love it. Who doesn't love beauty? Love is the recognition of beauty and perfection. So we are to love creation. We are to love the ikhtilaf wa al-sinatikum wa alwanikum, the diversity of your tongues and of your colors. The ikhtilaf, the diversity of creation, is beloved. So we are to be lovers of God's world and lovers of others in whom are not just the outward afaq, sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim. 
حتى يتبين لهم أنه الحق which will show them our signs on the horizons and in themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth within themselves in our inner earthworks seeing the miraculous unique irreplaceable lovability of others uh, to see others with the ayn al mahabba uh, that's uh, that's the miracle and that is the gift of iman not just seeing other people as fellow citizens with rights and responsibilities in a kind of dull cold liberal social contract but loving them as shawahid witnesses to the divine creative power revering them not because they are meat computers that will come to an end and will malfunction sooner or later, but because they contain the ruh, the qalb, because it is to them and their ancestor that the angels bowed. So this is the religion preeminently of mahabba, and the Qur'an is endlessly inviting us to remember God, but also to think about the beauty in the world. And in the month of Ramadan, as we look out of the window and we see the clouds go by and as we hear the bird song and we see the beauty of everything, we remember that he is indeed Habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whose sharia has been brought in this form, which is a form of love. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ The Qur'an says those who have iman have more, greater, stronger, more magnificent love for Allah. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify our hearts in this fasting month, to give us the inner as well as the outward bodily reality of the fast, to purify the hearts so that we start to see the light that is in God's creation, to love the beauty that is in God's creation and in each other, to make us people of tarahum, of mutual mercy, a people who are a light for the worlds, to follow the one who is uswatun hasana, an excellent example and to be an example uh, for all nations as a true ummatan wasata so that we may be shuhada'a ala nas witnesses to mankind in a time of fear and division and darkness and confusion and pestilence an ummah that is a witness to something better the ummah of love of mahabba the ummah of habibullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam